America Meditating Blog Talk Radio Show. We collect wisdom, hear stories, and inspire each other. I'm Sister Jenna. Tune in live from Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Sister Jenna and the American Meditating Radio Show are the key to peace, truth, beauty, and all that is good in the world, which is why I am a confirmed listener. This is Valerie Alexander, author of Happiness as a Second Language. He ran for state office and was beaten. Started a business and failed. Ran for Congress and lost. But thankfully, Abraham Lincoln didn't give up. Persistence. Pass it on from the Foundation for a Better Life at values.com. Hi, my name is Missy Crutchfield with Gandhi's Bee Magazine, an online magazine designed to raise awareness and inspire people about all of the amazing things happening in the world, as well as all the challenging things that can help us raise awareness so we can make a difference in the world and be the change. One of my inspirations is Sister Jenna and America Meditating Radio. I listen, you should too. Hello, everyone, and welcome to America Meditating Radio Show. I'm your host, Sister Jenna. We're broadcasting from the beautiful Meditation Museum, and we're going to have a new home in Tyson's Corner, Virginia. So hopefully we'll be all open and ready to run on September 21st, which happens to be the International Day for Peace. And by now you know we're doing an 11 days of compassion and healing on the America Meditating Radio Show. Between October 18th to 24th, Oprah Winfrey's network is launching a landmark television event entitled Belief. It's a week-long documentary series airing for seven days straight, and it depicts how people with a wide range of beliefs search for deeper meaning and connection with the world that's just around them. Now, this was inspired by Oprah herself, and it became a belief series, and now we're tying it into the International Day of Peace because from September 11th to September 21st, people around the country will be engaging in a conversation called the Belief Days of Compassion and Healing, which the America Meditating Radio Show is facilitating for the next 11 days. You see, the idea is simple. We still see so many divides in our world, particularly along spiritual, religious, political, economic lines. Another, And we want to break those walls down. We want to change that. And today we have the wonderful guest, very dear friend, six-time Emmy Award-winning media coach, Sean DePiron. She has taught thousands how to communicate as leaders in business. Maybe I should eye her. <laughs> and she has been featured in major media, including CNN, ABC, Inc., Inc. Magazine, and USA Today, to just name a few a Ph.D. candidate in interpersonal communication. Her expertise is gossip, how it impacts culture, the workplace, media, and our personal lives. Sean's personal passion, though, is forgiveness. She's got a massive forgiveness movement going on in social media, and her movement on global forgiveness was created through a film called Project Forgive, it's now a flourishing nonprofit foundation. The film's five minute movie trailer went viral and has been seen by tens of thousands of people across the globe through applying gossip research. Can you imagine that? It has also attracted visionary leaders such as Archbishop Desmond Tutu and recording artist Naomi Judd, who now both endorse the project. So we're going to get our wonderful, wonderful speaker on the air, Sean DePiron. Hi. Hi. I'm so happy. How are you? today i am so happy that you're happy and i'm even more yeah. happy that we're doing the 11 days of healing and compassion together because who best than you oh yay i am just so tickled to be here so tell me how is the forgiveness movement coming along you know sometimes i want to say pinch me like really oh it's, um, got it yeah and it's you know it's funny because i've been leading this movement and it's causing me to learn new layers of my own forgiveness. Um, you know how that works, right? It's like, oh, oh my gosh. Wow. I kind of wondered why it, did you even go there in the first place? 
<laughs> uh, and, and I feel like this is definitely my calling because even in my business, forgiveness is a major theme. And a lot of folks know when I share it pretty openly, I'm an incest survivor, and I've done so much work around this. And right. uh, and at the point where you know I say you know sometimes I can even say incensed, even though I don't endorse it for goodness sakes. But and it's the same. It's one of the most amazing things that's ever happened for me because of the person I've become and the person I'm becoming. And a whole nother layer with my mother, who uh, was recently diagnosed with cancer and had to and have been and continue to look at where am I incomplete with my mom so I can be peaceful and loving and not pass it on to the next generation and what can I pass on to my children and my grandchildren, what feelings, what emotions. And it's actually kind of divine and perfect to be part of um, what you're creating with Oprah and all the things that you're doing, sister. Yeah, well, you know, I, I've already submitted your introduction to the team there anyway, so I'm sure your offices have gotten into connection with each other. You know, the Values Partnership continues to come up with incredible ideas and thoughts and how to keep mobilizing a conversation in our country and globally to shift this negative stuff that we tend to make a lot of money from. And so one of the questions that we've been exploring within these 11 days, one is, what is your vision of you, Sean, healed from your inside? You know, it's it might be a little unique because I've really been thinking about mm. this. And um, you know what it boils down to for me? And what I'm seeing is the conversation of feelings. Feeling your feelings. And a vision for a healed, transformed world allows people to have their feelings. It doesn't mean you act on it if you're angry and you create violence. That's not what I'm talking about. When we bottle up our feelings, we act them out in different ways, usually in some kind of self-harmful way. So in my world, with a healed, transformed world, we allow ourselves and each other to vulnerably express our feelings so we can move through them. And um, and even the conversation of anger, which is a big one, because we've, we've been addressing it in Project Forgive, because we do have a documentary coming out, and asking a bunch of four-year-olds about forgiveness. Of course, they gave really awesome, exquisite answers. We also asked them about anger. And every single one of them, these are four-year-olds, said anger was bad. All of them. And I'm like, isn't that interesting? If, you know, of course it would be kind of frustrating if you're around someone who's mad all the time. That would kind of get draining. And the same thing would be happen would happen if you're around someone who is laughing all the time. You kind of might think they're a little cuckoo or a little crazy. And um, mm-hmm. and the uh, you know our suppressed stuff shows up in repetitive patterns. So the ability to feel feelings in a powerful way. And for me, that also includes fun. And I know um, you have a very very soothing energy like your meditations are some of my favorite and um and i kind of dance that up a little bit because i really play in the conversation of fun like just really having some fun and even in a healed world people are actually having fun and that is part of the vision because the more feelings you're expressing um the more capacity you have to lighten up not take things so seriously and i'm talking about your personal expression i'm not talking about suffering in the world the suffering in the world for me is allowing people to have their feelings and so that suffering can dissolve. I like that because I think that many of us suffering carries the doom and gloom mentality when perhaps the suffering is signaling to you, okay, master, mighty authority, find your cure and observe how you're going to emerge because we're not suffering without a cause. You know, there's something behind that. And so what is it that I need to understand about myself that perhaps I'm creating this energy within my being? So now I'd like to actually expand the story, Sean, to the world, from my own personal world, from your own personal world, and your own vision of your world being completely healed. What is your vision for a healed world? You know what? It's always going to come back to the ability to be able to forgive. Now, I'm going to go a little deep. Can I go deep? You can go deep. You're on the American Meditating Show. (laughs) Okay, good. (laughs) Good. So, you know, looking at this conversation of forgiveness and really seeing through this journey for the last few years, my understanding of forgiveness is that really is a skill. And when you become masterful at this skill, actually the conversation of forgiveness even disappears. Because you can, at some point, get to the point where there's nothing to forgive. 
And my vision of a healed world is forgiveness is not even necessary that we've become so healed and we're so skilled and masterful. Very similar, I'll use an analogy, because this is a deep conversation. Give an analogy of four-year-olds. You're a parent, and the four-year-old says, I hate you because you won't let me have ice cream. Now, uh, a very evolved parent would never take that personally, never. Like, oh, I know, and and they'd validate, oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart, I know you want ice cream, and I'm sorry, those aren't the choices today. You can either have eggs or you can have cereal. I hate you, Mommy, I want ice cream. I understand. And in that mother's world who's evolved emotionally, spiritually, deeply connected, there's nothing to forgive with that four-year-old, nothing. It is not personal. That mother is deeply grounded in her being, And she doesn't need to forgive anything. Now, you start adding more complex adult issues like incest, famine. You've got all those conversations going on when I even believe that this level of compassion and healing is possible in those conversations as well and that there really is nothing to forgive. And who are you going to be? And in this vision of a healed world, our being is so deep, so connected. We get that when we get mad at someone else, we're really getting mad at ourselves, that it becomes moot. The point becomes moot Mm. because we're so deeply Mm. connected. And that would be my vision of a healed world at a very highest, highest level. And I need to say as a caveat, some folks that might be listening are hurting. And whether they lost a job or a friend died of cancer, I mean, so many things happen for us. I, I like to say things happen for us. And there's a process to even get to that point, you know, grieving your losses, getting over the shock. And it's not a linear process. Forgiveness is not a linear process. And when you start moving through that, and there's a big distinction between grief and suffering. Suffering is just pure frickin' pain, man, and there's no way out. Grief, on the other hand, is the deepest, most sacred work I believe a human Mm. can do and experience because that's what changes you. You don't forget Mm. what happened to you or for you. You actually change your eyes and your perception of what happened for you. And that's Mm. where the skill of mastery comes in in that conversation of forgiveness. You see, this is what's making these 11 days so powerful for me. It's the conversation and what you just said was so spot on and powerful because it's raising the narrative within our own minds. It's raising us up to finding some real deep internal conviction that you have what it takes to get yourself over your humps. Because if you keep coming from a place of being broken and so abused and you keep bringing that into the world and then everyone you meet you don't trust, you're going to keep creating divides. You're going to keep creating separations. And for maybe those who find their sense of identity through distinguishing you know, who's high, who's low, who's black, who's white, who's Jew, who's Christian, I find that like not even a language that should exist anymore in the current times. And one of the questions I, I would love to raise to you right now is, why is it that you think that we see lines of division, especially across belief systems? I mean, I have seen Hindu and Catholic and Buddhism and all of that growing up as a child. So I'm not really focused on which religion I think is a chosen one. I think they're tribal, and I think it's just what you resonate with, with your languaging in this karmic birth. But my focus is on the experience of divinity, which doesn't have ownership with any particular religious bronze or spiritual tradition. But I'm a Brahma Kumari, and that's just where my tribal connectivity belongs because I love purity and I love cleanliness and I love to be happy and free. So I tend to be in that space because of these qualities that it offers. But we're seeing a lot of lines of division across belief systems. And I would love for Sean to share with our listeners, why do you think we're seeing that in particular from your words? Yeah, you know, um, I would base my understanding on my academic background, on my personal experience moving through conversations of incest for myself. And what I'm seeing and what I'm knowing from research is that we are biologically wired a certain way with our amygdala brain, our lizard brain, as Seth Godin calls it. And we have those basic instincts to flee, to stay, we have those basic instincts. And in those, and a lot of people would, in the spiritual realm, we'd call it ego, too, as well. And I think... The cosmic game and the cosmic fun game 
is for us to be here and to simply to grow outside of that lizard brain, that amygdala that has us react quickly. And the practice and spiritual practice is how do you tame, soothe, love up that ego part of us so we can calm down and go to that higher place. And the reason, in my estimation, we have so many different beliefs is because we're all at a different level of consciousness. And even though I personally believe, personally believe we're all one consciousness, everyone isn't playing the same game because of their level of consciousness. And this is not a competition, nor is it a one-up, because I see this a lot in the conversation of forgiveness and in the movement, like, you know, I'm going to take the high road. Actually, someone who's spiritually evolved does not even perceive taking the high road. They, mm-hmm. we, would feel, we would feel compassion or love and say, oh, I know that place really well from my experience. I don't know exactly what that person is going through, and I have compassion for where they are in this moment with this situation. So there's no high road to take here. Mm-hmm. Enlightenment is not a high road. It's simply mm-hmm. who we are and just remembering we are that. And it's a re-remembering. Mm-hmm. And, of course, these are my thoughts. There's, this is just what I think and, how, and what helps me, support me into, do, into doing deep grief work because I've been recently doing a lot of grief work. I'm finishing a Ph.D. that I've been working on for 10 years. And <laughs> one of the things I have, you know what I mean, like 10 years, come on. Okay. Bless your heart. Granted, I'm, <laughs> granted, I'm running a, a nonprofit, and I also have a very successful training company. And um, so it's not that. It's more about me looking like getting honest yeah. of not wanting to complete because what am I afraid of? What is my spiritual evolution yeah. in my beliefs and in my consciousness? And the, the, the pointed question that comes up for me is, well, who am I going to be if I'm not striving to be a Ph.D.? Who am I going to be? Right, right. Yeah, I'm observing lots of us, lots of us. And and I'm including myself in the story where I just knew how to dot my I's and cross my T's and present to you what was the perfect image that was needed. And I'm finding my honesty had so has so much now nothing to do with only what you're seeing, but it had so much with what I was seeing within myself. And it didn't have to always be perfect and saintly, but it had to be me. And the me that I am in process of, which I know, Sean, without a doubt, it will reveal the energy of God at some point. That as my personality expands and your personality expands, which I think is to the doorway of honesty, this divinity, this pureness, this virtuosity, this royalty, this this, this subtlety, this gentleness, this peacefulness will start to have people going, this is like God. This is how God would be if he was here. And I believe that we are moving towards a culture of children, and I'm calling all of us children, his children, that our effort of all the hell that we go through with our karmas, they were giving us an opportunity to turn back to love, and that is to turn back to him, to her, to the supreme power, which I feel is really important. You're giving me good temple. You know, um, one of the things I've been really looking at, because I'm an achiever, you know, I'm sure many Mm -hmm. people can relate to achieving, like, and, you know, I'm 51, I'm like, how much more achieving do I need to do here, you know? And um, one of my my favorite folks to listen to is Abraham Hicks. I'm enthralled every time I listen to her. And um, she asked a question in one of her emails, she asked, why do you want, because she talks about wanting and desire, and that it's a divine given. Um, and I really believe that. And I'm mm-hmm. at a different layer because one of the things that she, she talked about was, why do you want what you want? Because you think it's going to make you happy. And in this higher level of belief system, I'm questioning everything that I want. Because if I think, oh, I want that client. Oh, I want that. And I'm like, well, why do I want that? Because I think it's going to make me happy. And it gives me more freedom to trust the divine if it doesn't go the way that I want it to go or think it should go. Because I just think it's going to make me happy. And I'm getting a deeper trust with my higher being, my higher love, my higher sacred divinity, and my love with God or and for God, and whatever word you use works for me as well. And my attachment keeps decreasing because mm. I don't know what's best anymore. 
mm-hmm. even though I want it. It used to be very linear, like, oh, I want that. God must want me to have that because it's given me mm-hmm. a desire. That's a very young conversation of wanting and desire because I've mm-hmm. evolved out of, okay, I wanted that. It didn't happen. There's a very good reason for that. Okay, God, where do I go now? What would you like right. me to do? Who, who would you like me to be? Beautiful. Well put. Now, that mm-hmm. one step, that one step that you would take to promote healing across belief systems, what's that? It Hands down, I've seen it over and over and over again from every place I've spoken, from the media coverage, everything, is the conversation of accepting the apology you'll never receive. The conversation of accepting the apology wow. you'll never receive. Can and you that said it over and over again until it goes in my yeah. system that I'll never, yeah. ever, 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 ever forget that one. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's our it's a technique that we use, and actually we're going to be putting it yeah. on Facebook so people can get it for free. It's called accepting the apology you'll never receive, and it's a masterful skill when someone does something to you, which I call for you, and you really can't stand it, and they don't. You believe they don't have the skills to deeply apologize, so you, in your mind's eye, actually apologize for them. And I was just traveling with my husband and I was really upset about some editing around my PhD. And my husband said, you know, do you want to want me to do an apology for you for them so you can have some peace this weekend? And I said, absolutely. So now him and I do it together. He actually, he became that person and apologized deeply to me. And um, oh. I grieved in that moment. I deeply accepted the apology because I was really hooked with it. And I got a lot of freedom over the weekend. And it's something you can do within yourself. Beautiful. Sean DePiron, you've been an incredible asset and research in this conversation today. And we thank you so much for joining me and all of our listeners for the 11 days of belief and compassion. Before I let you go, is there anything that you'd like our listeners to know about Sean and what she's been up to? Because I know it's always a lot. You know, the only thing I want to say, if Project Forgive inspires you, come hang out with us, get involved with us in whatever way, even if it's sharing a poster on Facebook. If you feel inspired to donate, we're a nonprofit. And um, the uh, the main thing that I really want to say, first of all, Sister Jenna, your shows are so deep and so rich. It just gives me goose pimples to be with you. You're so spot Aww. on in what you're creating. And um, your listeners, Aww. I love you. I would say I love Thanks, you. Thanks, Sean. So much appreciate mm. you and all the very best and hope to see you soon. Mm, much love. So how important is it for you to be listening to yourselves and to know that you've got to turn inwards and raise your bar, raise your internal bar of just acceptance so that you can move on. And if you're really at a higher level, is forgiveness needed? Really big question here. I totally believe that. I believe that you are playing out a particular part because it's inscripted to you. So is it really a matter of forgiveness or is it just a matter of, you know, that's what you had to do? My question is now, where do I go with me or what is it that I have to do? Hope you've enjoyed our conversation today with six-time Emmy Award-winning media coach Sean DePuron. Please contact Sean at seantv.com and that's S-H-A-W-N-E-T-V.com or at projectforgive.com. I'm sure there are a lot of resources there. And now as we really continue to engage in these incredible conversations around the 11 days of compassion and healing, huh? it's been rich, hasn't it? We've had incredible conversations in the last days of the week. And so tweet us your thoughts and ideas. Hashtag Belief Days at Own TV or at Joshua Dubois. Send it to us too at America Meditating so we can continue the conversation. The show is not complete until we get our beautiful Sister Gita on the air to read us one of her incredible poems about life. And we're going to turn to Sister Gita now to tell us what's going on. What's your latest little gift? Good day and greetings of heartfelt love. I am extracting from the book heart of God, and most appropriate is the topic, the purifier. We're talking about healing and compassion, aren't we? I am the purifier. I am free from physical contamination and moral pollution. I am pure, eternal energy. I am a pure being bearing no imperfections. I am capable of bringing only benefit to all souls. Therefore, 
My part is to purify you and liberate the world from its sorrow. Only I can make you pure again. The relationship of the soul and God the Supreme Soul is unique and can be experienced only at this auspicious time. I make you pure again by tying you to me with a thread of love. Become absorbed in this love and have love for me, the purifier, and all your weaknesses will be removed. With the energy and power of pure thought come to purify the whole universe. All souls come to me, but not everyone understands that they must become pure. Those who become pure are my helpers in releasing the world from suffering, and they then inherit a life of happiness. I help you to have pure thoughts, pure words, pure actions. In your connection with me, you are able to manifest your pure motives to change and to heal yourself and the sickness of all the souls in the world. I bathe you in pure light and cleanse you with pure love, enabling you and your heart to be free and at peace. I am your father, your mother, your parent, God the Supreme, and I love you. However you are, whatever you are, you are mine. Om Shanti. And we'll now end our show with the beautiful voice of Kristen Hoffman.
Claim your pride. 